In this video we'll examine how you can use an MB102 power supply, just like this one, to provide power to your breadboard projects. Welcome, to Electronics for Absolute Beginners. When you start designing and building digital electronic circuits, rather than simple analog circuits, you will very soon realize that a normal DC battery supply isn't suitable to directly power a breadboard. Whether you're playing around with microcontrollers or logic gate integrated circuits, you will need a convenient way to provide the breadboard with a reliable 5 volt power supply. An MB102 power supply is a cheap and convenient way to do this. This nice little power supply module can plug neatly into a breadboard. We'll take a look at all the parts of the power supply module, including the various ways that either 3.3 volts or 5 volts can be supplied to a breadboard circuit. This includes various pin connectors for jumper wires, as well as a USB connector, which can be used to supply 5 volts. There's also a barrel connector, which can be used to power the module. Finally, we'll mention the other chips and components on the board, such as the two voltage regulators and the smoothing capacitor. Connecting the module to a breadboard is really easy. You just need to align the four sets of pins, with holes on the breadboard. There are two sets of pins on either side of the module. Carefully push the module into position. The MB102 power supply requires a DC power supply itself, of between 6.5 volts and 12 volts. I always use mine with a 9 volt battery supply, as shown here. Check the specifications for your MB102 to see if there are any recommendations with regard to the DC power supply you should, or should not use. The DC power inlet itself is a barrel type, for use with a 2.1mm jack. You can get these with a battery clip on the other end, so it's perfect for use with a 9 volt battery. Once you've attached your DC power supply, and connected the module to the breadboard you can switch it on. The little green LED here indicates that the module itself is receiving power and is switched on. When the module is connected to a breadboard, you can choose whether you want to supply 5 volts or 3.3 volts to the breadboard rails. Each 3.3 volt or 5 volt supply has a small jumper to enable you to select what you want. The choices for each supply are, 3.3 volts, 5 volts, or off. Here, I've set both jumpers to 5 volts. This means that each rail on the breadboard supplies 5 volts, and 0 volts. Not that it has anything to do with the subject of this video, but this is a little circuit that shows the operation of a logic gate. The circuit requires both buttons to be pressed, to switch on the LED. As well as using the jumper settings we just looked at, you can also use the pins shown here to provide 3.3 volts or 5 volts. These connectors can be useful if, for example, you have a breadboard circuit that isn't the correct size for the module. In this situation, you can use the module without it even being connected to a breadboard at all. For convenience though, and to avoid damaging the module, I'll reconnect it to a breadboard. To use these pins, you need to have some jumper wires that have male connectors on one end, and female on the other. There are two rows of four pins. On one side there are four ground, or zero volt connectors. On the other side, there are two 3.3 volt, and two 5 volt connectors. Take your time when using these pins, as they bend quite easily. I almost snapped one off myself when I was making this video. 
what I'm going to do here, is to show how you can provide power to a different breadboard. In fact, you can see here that we are powering two breadboards at the same time. The USB connector can be used to output power from the module. I'm just setting both jumpers to the off position. By doing this, the module is no longer supplying any power to the breadboard's rails. There's no real need to do this. I just want to show that I'm using the USB connector to supply power, and that the 3.3 and 5 volt supplies are not being used anywhere. This is the circuit that I'm going to power. You can see that no power is being supplied to the first circuit. But the second circuit is being powered, from the USB port. In this next part of the video, we'll just check to see what voltage levels are actually being supplied. This is really important to do because I have read some reviews of MB102 power supplies, where the voltage levels delivered are higher than they should be. This would not be good if you were powering a logic gate that required a fairly accurate 5 volt supply, and the true voltage being supplied was 7 volts, for example. You can see that the LED on the left is less bright than the one on the right. The left one should be receiving 3.3 volts, while the one on the right should be receiving 5 volts. Let's see what voltage they are actually receiving. That looks like 5 volts to me, so that's spot on. It's exactly what I wanted to see. So, let's check the voltage level for the other LED. 3.28 volts. Not bad. It's only slightly down on the 3.3 volts we should be getting. Let's take a quick look at the other main components on the module. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, there are two voltage regulators on the board. One is a 5 volt regulator, which is the one on the left, and the other is for 3.3 volts. A voltage regulator, is a system designed to automatically maintain a constant voltage. The purpose of a smoothing capacitor, shown here, is to even out fluctuations in a signal, often a power supply voltage. Power supply voltages can sometimes be erratic if they are not smoothed out. When a steady DC signal is required, a smoothing capacitor is normally used. As a bit of fun, and just to finish off the video, here is a setup where we have seven circuits all being directly powered by the module at the same time. Thanks very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And why not subscribe to our channel to see the other electronics videos we have.